Hey everybody, it's Jim, and welcome back to another lesson of Introduction to Corn Shell. I wanted to briefly go over what we did last time. We learned how you can take and enter flags on the command line, and how to have a Corn Shell script read those flags in. And we did that with the get ops command. And the get ops command has a list of valid flags, and any time one of those valid flags is entered, you put the flag name right in this variable here, which is any variable name you want. And if you precede the list of valid flags with a colon, then any time anyone enters an invalid flag, a question mark will get put inside of this variable right here. Now, if you notice, in the last lesson, we did a get ops command. We incremented i by 1, and then we just printed the value within flag entered. And we did that once, twice, three times. We did the exact same code three times. Normally, when you use the exact same code, that's a signal you want to use a loop. And another signal you want to use a loop is the fact that this right here, the way the code is written, it can only handle three flags. Sometimes the user might enter one flag, sometimes they might enter five. You want it to be able to handle that. And with a loop, a loop is a variable, excuse me, it runs a variable amount of times depending on the test result within the test condition of the loop. If you have a while loop, it only runs while the test condition is true. So how do we take and go from here to putting that inside of a loop? This is how we do it right here with a while loop. Now this right here is our test. How does this work? Well, this is all one command right here. And the great thing about the get ops command is that anytime it finds a flag, whether it's a valid flag, as an X or Y in this case, or an invalid flag, which would be symbolized by the colon, it returns a value of true. So this command returns a value of true right here whenever it finds a flag, whether it's valid or invalid. Therefore, this while statement is true as long as getOps can get flags from the command line. As soon as it runs out of flags to process, this getOps, this whole command right here, turns false. Therefore, we get out of this loop. So let's look at this loop. Let's go through it. This getOps will go to the first flag that it finds, and if it's a valid flag, it enters it into this variable called flag, and you'll notice that it is a different name than the last example, and I just wanted to prove to you that it's okay to choose whatever name you want. So if the user enters an X or a Y, a dash X or a dash Y, that is assigned to flag. If the user enters a dash anything else, a question mark gets assigned to flag. And getOps, because it was able to find a flag, returns a value of true. Since this is true, this while statement is true, therefore we go down inside of the do to done portion. And inside of the do to done portion, we have that same exact code that we had from the last example, which was simply to increment i by 1, and I did set i to 0 before the loop, and then just to print the value of the flag, what the flag was. We then go down to the done portion, which says go back up to the while loop, and run this test again. Well, this test is the corn shell command get ops. So this is the second time it's run. Therefore, it will look at the second flag, if there is one, and so on and so forth. It will keep on doing this until it runs out of flags. When it runs out of flags, this get ops command right here will return a value of false, and then this while loop 
will stop executing because it says while false. So therefore, it doesn't do this. It goes down right after the done and starts execution of the code right from there. So let us take a look at the code. And as always, our pound exclamation point slash bin slash ksh. Name the program. I just put in a couple examples here. Same as last time. And builds upon last example, but uses a while loop. And then I defined a variable called usage, which just tells you the name of the program and the flags that you can use optionally if you want. So once again, as in this, the last program, I defined a counter called i, and I set it to zero. And this right here is just our code that we went over. We have a while loop, and our test condition for the while loop is the get ops function of corn shell. It will read in all the command line flags or whatever you put in for arguments. Anything that starts with a dash x or a dash y is a valid flag. It will assign an x to or y to the variable flag. If it's a dash anything else, because we have our colon there, it will assign a question mark to flag. It will then go inside of the do to done and it will increment i and it will just basically print the flag we entered and then we go back up top look at the second flag so forth and so on until get ops runs out of flags anything that starts with a dash when it runs out of flags or it encounters something that doesn't start with a dash it returns a false and while false means exit our while loop so here are some examples of the program being run I did a dash X and as you can see we only had one flag here and it said one flag one is X in the next example I gave a bunch of flags we had dash XY which turned into our first flag is X flag number two is Y then I did X again and we had flag three is X I did a Q and an R and as you can see, flag four is question mark, flag five is question mark, and then again I ended it with an, another dash X flag, and it said flag six is X. I ran the program without any flags, and you can see it returned nothing. And then I ran the program with something that wasn't a flag, and as you can see, it returned nothing. And then I ran the program with a flag, something that's not a flag and then another flag and the way that the get ops works is it interpreted the dash X it then encountered something that wasn't a flag so returned a false value and that caused the while loop to exit so we never got to the dash Y so as you can see if you enter something that isn't a flag it causes the get ops to exit as our script is written. In the future, we'll learn how to do something like this where we say dash x space 5. And it will actually interpret the 5. In our next lesson, we'll do one more thing with the get ops function that will tie all this.